Hello and welcome. I'm Robbie. And I'm Jay. And you join us for episode 33 of Generations Apart, the show where we chat about gaming and technology across the generations, sharing our perspective on the past and our excitement for the future. On today's episode, we're talking about tech gimmicks again, specifically looking at the weird smart devices out there. We will decide whether they are actually useful or just, just a gimmick. Before we get into that, though, Jay, what's piqued your interest this week? Well, I have some VR for you this week, uh, specifically from a company called, uh, well, the, sorry, the company behind the free app on Quest and Pico devices called Immersed. Now, the app itself allows you to create virtual PC monitors, much like the example shown in Apple Vision Pro's spatial computing example, um, and it's very popular. Uh, it's used by lots of people, I think 40 to 50 hours per week. Uh, they've got users spending in the Immersed app, and it claims to be the most used spatial computing software worldwide, which I imagine was not a quote they were attributing to their software until Apple started calling it spatial computing. Of course. But anyway, so but the reason that I'm bringing this up is that they are actually, or well, they've now announced, they're going to be releasing a premium headset Um which is designed to do exactly that, to be worn for a longer period of times and to work as a sort of interface for your computers. So they are looking at something that is significantly lighter, um, more comfortable, and probably more akin to the big screen VR announcement that we talked about a few episodes ago, mm. which is that sort of almost goggle-like small slimline device. Yeah. They do they look like ski goggles. Much. They do. They haven't announced too much about them. Um, so Big Screen Beyond's device, which we talked about, they're going to be cabled and tethered. This will be entirely wireless uh, and has integrated inside-out tracking from Qualcomm. They're also stating that the visors will be 4K OLED micro displays per eye, whereas the Big Screen Beyond had 2.5K mm. OLED micro displays. Um, and the visor has HD color pass-through to see the real world. Um, there's no prices yet been announced as to what this is no more sort of concrete information in fact about the hardware they're hoping to ship them in time uh, for 2024 and they'll be opening pre-orders very soon they have said although they've not announced the price that it will be less than apple's three and a half thousand dollar vision pro headset wow so there you go yeah I, exciting the tech that's in there 4k again per eye is that right mm -hmm. yeah impressive 4K per eye fully well, wireless beyond Big screen beyonds with two and a half K per eye. Uh, this one's going to be 4K for this device. That's big specs. Big specs for mm -hmm. kind of a... This is their first think, headset, right? It's their first headset. Um, they are a startup. So, you know, to be a little bit mindful of that. But then big screen beyond were also have gone into hardware from software. They were making mm. software for uh, VR headsets. And now they've started making the headsets themselves. So there is a, there is a sort of precedent for it. I think, interestingly, if you look at the language used in the article, which, of course, we'll share as we always do, they are talking about premium. They're quoting premium specs. They don't name a price other than it will be cheaper than the Vision Pro. But let's be honest, $3,499 is still less than Apple Vision's Pro. It's a big margin. It's a hell of a, hell of a pill to swallow. Yeah. So you know, even if this comes in at $2,000, let's say, it still puts it significantly above kind of other consumer headsets on the market. Um, but I think this is now where we're going to start to see this, this whole concept of premium headsets. And perhaps one of the things that Apple were rumoured to have done or believed to have done for the industry was to remove that cap on what the hardware should cost. Yeah. Because up until now, it's been about a race to the bottom. What's the cheapest you can make a headset for? Mm -hmm. And you know, that constrains the experience because you're restricted to the component parts. It's got to be mass produced, shipped around the world, and you know, affordable for, for kind of everyday consumers. I think what we're now seeing is so your hardware manufacturers have now been given almost free roam to say, well, actually, if Apple are going to charge three and a half thousand for theirs, we'll do ours for two thousand mm. with what we think are kind of comparable specs. And yeah. then go out and build something. 
So it'd be interesting to see what it finally gets priced at. Um, as I said, they've not given anything away. But I think it's also interesting that we've now seen a couple of different vendors come into the market with VR headsets to challenge Meta, challenge um, Valve, um, and, and of course Apple next year when their headset releases. So, you know, who knows? Is this going to now generate more interest in, in VR and AR headsets and bring premium devices to the market in a way we haven't seen before? Mm, yeah, interesting. It's another one that isn't focused on gaming again, or at least as far as yeah. I can tell on first look. Certainly seems to be leaning into productivity. And um, that, that's, and that's where quite they can, interesting in itself. That's where they can get away with the focus on premium features as well, because professionals typically have more money to spend on devices that are going to help them be more productive than the average user yeah. will spend on gaming devices. So, yeah, if you, if you get a bit more leeway with the, the hardware that you can add into these things and the, the price bump, at least. Well, exactly to that point. If you think about what an average games console costs, it's what, four to five hundred pounds. So if you're a gamer, that's what you're used to paying for your hardware. Yeah. If you're talking about professional grade computing devices and you're talking about laptops, phones, tablets, and you're talking usually over the thousand pound mark mm. um, and beyond. So I think it does open up that bracket and it, it opens up the kind of expectations that your audience are, 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 you know, are going to be dropping a little bit more for this experience, but they're getting something that's more premium. Yeah. Yeah. Exciting. Uh, I, I would be interested to see a couple of things. The price, of course, but also the battery life, if it's entirely wireless. So, yeah, I'm excited for when that we get more details on that. I'll keep an eye out, and if uh, they announce anything else, I'll try to make sure I share it. Mm, please do. What about you, Robbie? What piqued your interest? So, for me today, it's kind of a quick story that I saw that was quite cool. Um, I'm always on the eye, uh, keeping my eye out for environmentally friendly tech. And so I saw a video by, um, I believe it was TechLinked from the Linus Media Group, um, one of his uh, sub-YouTube channels. And they were talking about how a manufacturer called Infineon is looking at developing soluble uh, compute chips um, that can dissolve in water so that the e-wastage is now kind of reduced. So they're, they're, I think they're trialing hmm. it at the moment. I'm not sure it's fully released. But the idea behind this kind of CPU board, and it's the main motherboard behind it rather than the metal components on it, um, which is typically made from silicon, is now using, or it's suggested by Infineon that they'll start using plant-based PCBs instead. Um, that if in water, and I think it doesn't actually mention it in the article, but the video I watched, which I'll also link, um, they mentioned it has to be quite hot water and they have to be in the hot water for around an hour for it to dissolve properly. But there's an interesting photo on this article showing you what it looks like as it's starting to devolve and it starts to get you know strands of kind of little fibers start to fall off and uh, as it starts to dissolve which i thought was just quite a cool innovation uh, especially in the environmentally friendly space you know there's tons and tons of e-waste especially especially for silicon and pcb wastage so this is just a quite a cool way of combating that which i hadn't really thought about before you know dissolvable parts yeah, no, no, another had I. And I guess my first reaction was, that doesn't sound like something I want. What if my device gets <laughs> water damaged, etc.? But then you obviously described the kind of amount of time and the temperature the water required to dissolve it. That makes perfect sense. And yeah. it's, it's highly unlikely you would expect to, to you know, submerge your phone in a, a liter of boiling water for an hour and to expect it to survive anyway, to be honest. True. So, you know, if the board is then dissolved to be environmentally friendly, probably silver lining to your tech disaster mm. but um no that sounds like a really good idea i guess my concern with anything that dissolves into water is what's being dissolved into that water and how is it being removed from that water so to yep. make that water consumable if it's plant-based does it need to be perhaps that's okay um or perhaps that water then needs treating in some way but that would be the only thing but yeah i, I like that really interesting idea and Good to see sort of tech companies taking that environmental challenge seriously. Definitely. Just reading the article just on that, about what it leaves behind, um, it's suggested in the article by Jive Materials, who I think they're they are making the, the um, oh, they designed the materials for Infineon to use, have suggested that it has a significant lower in, uh, carbon footprint than traditional uh, glass fibres. But um, 
yeah, it's hard to say, you know, what actually is left behind <laughs> from it. I can't see um, anything else in there. I'd, li I'd like to see a YouTube video where one of the executives dissolves a, a board and then drinks the water. Oh, God. Now, that would be an advert, wouldn't it? That's something you would see, uh, like, <laughs> on stage. I do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, and then he just drops dead. And everyone's like, ah! Yeah, it'd be like uh, anyway. when the cyber truck was released and they started throwing things at the windows. <laughs> That wasn't yeah, planned. I don't know. I'm still blown away that 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 that, that device took so many pre-orders and continues to be so sort of eagerly anticipated. I mean, I it's an interesting looking thing. I don't think I'd want to own one, and I thought it was hilarious. One of its main claims for sort of like durability was instantly ruined on stage <laughs> twice. It was like maybe the first throw was a fluke. I'll do another one. Bang. Oh no, that's also broke a window. You know they discovered well, why. They discovered they? why. Yeah, yeah. So, well, at least this is a hypothesis from um, from Elon when he's interviewed about it later. Is they also took the sledgehammer to the door, and so they yeah. think that hitting the door would have chipped some of the glass under the under the frame and made it vulnerable to the um, the actual throwing of things. I don't know how legit that is, but could be mm. why. Could be why. Because apparently they did tons of tests on that. I think that very car beforehand, um, and it was fine. But they didn't hit it with the sledgehammer on the door itself before they hit the window. So that I suppose was the only thing that could potentially be. But then if you think, so, what good is a like a uh, yeah. crack proof window if you can just hit the door and then hit the window? <laughs> I was say yeah, it doesn't. It kind of defeats the object, doesn't it? So you're okay as long as the earthquake that you're in, or the you know the the gunfight you get drawn into, or the I don't know, the, the demonstration rally that you accidentally drive through, they only hit you once. As yeah. long as they don't attack you more than once, you'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway. As, as long as they don't hit the door first and then hit the window, <laughs> yeah. you should be okay. It's like a secret code, isn't it, to get in? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Hit the door, then the window, and everything unlocks. Yeah, it's like them cool uh, kind of school shows you used to see in, um, I used to watch as a kid where they would just do a certain tap pattern and all these lockers would just start popping open. Yeah. <laughs> just like that. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we'd go off on a tangent. But that was, uh, that was what piqued my interest this week. Um, but getting into the topic for today, so we did an episode a while ago on tech gimmicks, and the format of that episode was we went through a few different articles, and I, I can't remember what it was. I think it was just general tech that we looked at. We even looked at foldable foldable devices as well, um, and we looked at foldable laptops and, and other foldable screens. On today, we're looking at weird smart devices, and there's some funky ones out there. In fact, our very first episode, I don't know if you remember, I brought up that Withings device, which was a smart pee monitor that uh, they can monitor your pee that sits on the rim of your toilet. So I think that's what sparked our conversation on having an entire episode on just the weird world of smart devices at the moment. So very similar format. I'll go through a bunch of different articles and we can decide between us whether we think it is a gimmick or whether we think it is something that's actually going to be useful. And there's a fair mix of different things in here, but quite a lot of them seem to be focused on health and or food related seems to be quite a popular one as well but why don't i uh, bring it up on screen well, the first one just while you're doing that i guess yeah. a quick bit of information for those listening uh i haven't seen any of these mm. so robbie has prepared this list we'll get through as many i think of the 10 you've prepared as Got possible yeah. um but i have no idea what's coming so my reactions to these will be genuine <clears throat> and unthought through Probably poorly considered in terms of what comes out of my mouth. So, you know, here we go. Brilliant. Yeah. And to be honest, I haven't read a lot of detail on each of them, but I think we could discover it together because there's quite a lot of them that are really in depth in terms of their features and specs. And okay. with that, I'll bring us to the first one, which I didn't read everything that it, it can do because it can do so much, but it is a smart toilet. Um, and, you know, smart toilets are not, I guess, new. Um, Japanese toilets famously had very fancy features, you know, the Simpsons even took the mick out of them when they mm -hmm. had their episode, when they went over to Japan and it did like a fireworks show on the toilet. Um, this is probably the most elaborate version of that that I've ever seen. It's called the Numi 2.0. Um, mm -hmm. And it looks like, I don't know, it looks like a trash can actually. It's kind of squared off. Um, you can see it in the images now. But what it has inside, which uh, a lot of the fancy smart toilets do, there is a what's called a smart, uh, sorry, a, uh, was it a spray wand, which is essentially it's got a built-in bidet, which is one of the uh -huh. key features. 
but there's also a ton of different settings on it. You can set the pressure, the pulsation, the oscillation, and the temperature of that particular bidet, which sounds, you know, it's an awful lot of customization for a, for a toilet. It also has built-in lighting. Um, and for those who are watching on YouTube, you can see an example of some of the lighting that's brought up. You can control it from your phone, the lighting as well. And it has a built-in speaker. If you want to listen to relaxing music while you're on the toilet. Um, and a heated seat, of course. That's uh, got to be a given. Immersive light and sound. It brags on their website. So there you go. Smart toilet. Sorry. Immersive light and sound. I've never gone to the toilet and think, I want to be more immersed with what's going on inside this bowl. Yeah. Is the lighting in the inside or the outside? It's on the outside. Yeah. So it's, there's a trim around the oh, bottom. Oh, okay. So it's, and then it's okay. also on the back. So it's creating an environment for you to do your business in yeah. rather than illuminating the activity. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It, it, I think okay. it also has a smart um, feature to, to see when you're approaching it. So it's hands-free lifting up and closing of the, the lid and things like that as well. Which I is quite like that. That's quite clever. Yeah, yeah. I think that's more useful than playing music or lighting up. Yeah. Um, yeah. One thing I'd want to know with that customized bidet feature is <laughs> the extent to which it can be like profiled. Because I tell you now, if I get in the shower after my wife, the settings of that water are scolding. I don't want to follow her into the toilet if she set the bidet to do the same thing. It's a I don't very want my good point. Ring jet washed with steaming hot water. So I'd like to know that you can have like profiles so it might recognize your butt cheeks and go, ah. Oh. <laughs> Jay, welcome. Print. Uh, I have configured the bidet to the cool, high pulsing jet wash that you've chosen, <laughs> and here's some music that you like while you poop. You know, uh, that is interesting. <clears throat> interesting. That could be a feature. I haven't. Even, there's so much involved in this toilet that it's hard to tell. Uh, you know whether that is a feature. There is an app, and it says you can personalize the settings. But I wonder if you could personalize it per person who has the app. And you could share it in the family. That would seem like an obvious innovation. I mean, I'll be honest, I, more often than not, I probably do have my phone in my pocket when I go to the toilet, but not everyone in our house takes their phone absolutely everywhere. So does that mean that your phone would have to be with you in terms to trigger your personal toilet experience? We're just going to have to get one to find out, Jane, that's it. I also think that there could be a lot of fun to be had if you could get a hold of other people's profiles. I like the idea, for example, of some sort of dramatic red siren-like lighting mode <laughs> with really loud, obnoxious noises. Um, so that as your partner approaches the toilet, rather than getting their tranquil sounds and soothing lighting, they get something really aggressive and yeah. loud. Heavy metal music. That, and that red alerts lighting. everyone else in the house that they've gone to the toilet. That could be fun. <laughs> yeah, I suppose like a siren. Like um, you yeah, just shouts out your yeah. name and says that you're pooping. Yeah. <laughs> 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 alarm, alarm. Yeah, that, that could be quite good fun. Um well, I like the whole uh, that was the hygienic side of the seat auto kind of mm. raising and closing, because you know that's that's something in public toilets touching the toilet seat's always questionable, isn't it? Yes. Um, I think I did see in one of the adverts because I saw it on uh, on Amazon as well. I think it had UV light inside the toilet to help it uh, oh, get like, even cleaner clean. as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's clever. Again, that's a useful feature. Yeah, that is a useful feature. How but, much does one of these things cost? Do you have any idea? So eight thousand six hundred twenty-five. Well, it's on offer. Sorry for eight thousand six hundred twenty-five uh, dollars. When I first looked it up, uh, the the article I found this through uh, said it was twelve and a half thousand. So it's reduced from its original price. Oh, um, that's quite even, a reduction as well, like thirty odd percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're selling well then. Well, I mean, just looking at the ratings on the website, two point seven out of five. So it's not highly re reviewed. It's one of those reviews. things as well. It, it probably doesn't do all those things particularly well. It's probably riddled with problems. Even if it did, £8,000 just for the toilet is targeting a very niche audience, isn't it? In oh, definitely. Definitely. Anyone who needs... money to do that, you know. Anyone who needs this many features uh, clearly has very different priorities to, I think, the general public. <laughs> <laughs> What would you want your smart toilet to do, Robbie? What would make your toilet going experience better? There's one thing on here that I did quite like, which is it's a taller seat, uh, more suited for adults. 
That's literally the only feature I'd actually want. Height from adjustable, this. so it goes not only not does it recognise your butt cheeks, just, but it just goes. Taller. <laughs> what if it could adjust though for smaller people as well? Oh, that's just a recipe. So if a short for... person goes in, it lowers itself. And when a tall person goes in, it raises. And if you're going in for a pee, it goes even higher to avoid kind of splash. That would be clever. But also, the plumbing involved in that, I don't even want to know. With moving <laughs> around the, the waste pipe all, all over the place, up, down, left, right, all over. <laughs> so I think that would probably be pretty straightforward for it to do. If it was mm-hmm. re-engineered from the ground up. If it ever leaks, though, I think you're a bit screwed. Like, who would I you mean, even if, call if, out to fix it? That's if it cost me eight grand, I'd expect it to never leak, ever. Well, looking at the reviews of this, the biggest complaint, I think, is um, pairing to specific devices. It's apparently it falls at, at that um, even simple task. I don't think I'd want my toilet seat paired. I think that was one thing I would say, is if it was going to be a smart toilet, I just want a control panel on the wall where I can choose, like, a profile and it, mm. or, or change the settings. Because, as you said, things that pair with your phone are unreliable at best. And then as yeah. soon as that phone upgrades new operating system and they don't upgrade the app suddenly your fancy expensive toilet's redundant whereas if it links to a panel on the wall that is the same panel every time i think that just makes life easier for me yeah. anyway and in, in um, the theme i think with all of these in the back of my mind at least with all smart devices that you have in the house is what if it gets hacked what would you do if it starts <laughs> like violently spraying out from the bidet and <laughs> starts playing like propaganda yeah, the toilet. absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I mean, I've seen videos of um, people just being in their home and someone hacking their Alexa and started speaking to people and, you know, seeing them through the camera and things like that just freaks me out a bit. Probably not Alexa. I think it was probably one of a, like a knock I shouldn't there's no cameras in this toilet. <laughs> there's no cameras. There's no cameras. <laughs> but you could just have someone Bobby, shouting at you while you're trying to go to the toilet. You or... yeah. <laughs> there has sensors to tell when you're going. So you could just, the person who's hacked could just wait until you sat down and then start screaming at you. I would want it to do what my son's potty does, which is when it detects action, it plays a little tune and congratulates you for successfully doing a poo. I imagine you could probably set that in these settings, providing you get a pad. Yeah, I want a little cheer. Well done. You know, pat on the back. Maybe a physical pat on the back, like a hand comes out the toilet and kind of pats you where you sit. Or well, let's <laughs> say you're struggling. You've got, you know, you're backed up and it, it rubs your back, gently massages your back until you comfortably pass. If that's what you need, Jerry, <laughs> I mean, I, I would be horrified uh, if a random arm came out of my toilet and started patting me on the back <laughs> or, uh, or clapping or rubbing my back or anything. I would... I would... Shoulder rub, just give us a grip your shoulders. Come oh. on, you can do it. Do you remember that scene in Austin Powers when uh, he goes to the toilet and then um, number two... Goes to the, uh, goes one of the other guys goes to the toilet and I think it's like the leprechaun guy tries to like choke out Austin Powers yeah and there's a guy next to him in the toilet and he's there going who does number two work for and he's like you tell him buddy and I like the idea of my toilet encouraging me yes maybe that's the soundtrack you could download for your for your new me toilet I'll be honest Robbie this episode's already gone very dark within just the first item you've thought we'd up. open it up with a with a winner <laughs> yeah does it get worse or weirder than this i think this is probably the weirder one one okay. of the weirder ones Fine. but another thing to keep Maybe. in mind that yeah. what if it gets hacked just all of them um but there you go what do you think gimmick or do you think this is a legit thing most of those features most of them are gimmick mm. i like the idea of the sort of hygiene factor of the toilet Raising and lowering the seat, having the UV lights to clean. Um, I don't mind the UV thing. I think most people have got like you know lights in their bathrooms now. I like the idea of like an automated candlelit toilet experience, <laughs> but it feels a bit gimmicky. I don't think I need a Bluetooth music player. I just use my phone if I'm sat there with it in hand anyway. Mm. Um, well, which I know is unclean, by the way, and then people moan about that. But um, I think gimmick probably. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm on. If, I'm on if your the focus side. was hygiene, it'd be different. But I'm, like it's I'm, I'm on your side as well. I, I do think it's a gimmick, though. I'm surprised, uh, or was surprised recently, where we're getting our bathroom uh, refitted, and the Have amount. You Sorry. Have you bought one? A new bathroom? Not yet. No, we're just looking. No, the toilet. Oh no, no, we're not getting the toilet. Absolutely not. I've just noticed as well. If you change it to black instead of white, it adds on an extra grand. Imagine that. 
<laughs> um, it but... also hides a multitude of sins. It does. It does, I guess. <laughs> um, but no, I was just, I was just going to say that. So we're, we're looking to fit in the bathroom at the moment, and one of the things that I didn't realize was such a feature that people wanted in their bathrooms is a speaker. And we were just looking at like a a, a mirrored cabinet, and the amount of speaker versions of mirrored cabinets that you can get um, is is astounding. And there's just tons of them. In fact, it was hard to not get one um, in the brochures that we we're looking at anyway. They're really trying to push the speakers onto you. Um, but apparently that is a thing that people like in their bathrooms. So, I don't know. I must admit, I, I have bought in the past uh, a few different kind of waterproof, supposedly showerproof, like speakers, Bluetooth mm. speakers. They've been quite good. It's actually quite nice. And a bit of music when you're in the shower or, you know, in the bath or something. I've never been um, one of those. No? But anyway. There you have go. you tried it? No. No. I'm, I'm like well, in go. and out of the shower. I don't mess around. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm, I don't go in there intentionally to mess around. But I, you know, I'm not, and I'm not a bath person. I think no. You and me probably for similar reasons don't get Top on with baths. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Um, so yeah, but I can see the appeal. Yeah, I think for a very specific type of person, they would enjoy this. I mean, I can't imagine you not having other very expensive things in the bathroom. Um, this is unlikely to be the only expensive thing. Yeah. If, if you're going to fit say, out a bathroom with this. You'd just be in the toilet the whole time, wouldn't you? Like if the mo- it's more expensive than your sofa, you'd just be like, I'm going to the toilet because that's where the gadgets is. I paid eight grand for this. I'm going to yeah. sit on it. You better have yeah. a jacuzzi in that bath. That's all I'm saying. If you got one of these. I thought you were going to say the toilet. I was going to say this is just getting weirder. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Okay. We'll leave it let's there. Let's move, move on, on to the next. Yeah. I think so, it's a universally a gimmick. Let's crack on. Renowned gimmick. Gimmick even. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, so next one. This is a bit more normal. This is a bit on more normal. And I just chose one specifically because I know it's a subset of uh, products, but it's the idea of smart ovens. And I don't know how much you know about smart ovens. They vary in how smart they actually are. Mm-hmm. But I, for me, I never understood what they were for um, or why it needed to be smart. So I thought it was a good one to include on the list. This one is the, basically, I just went to, I Googled it, and I got to a website, happened to be John Lewis. And I, um, they have a subsection of smart ovens, and I just put the most expensive in one um, in the list. <laughs> and I was like, that's got to have the most features in there. So we've got the Siemens HR678GES6B. Rolls off the tongue. Oh, yeah. Catchy. Uh, it's £1,500, and yeah. it looks like a fairly normal oven. The only thing I'd say is it does have a kind of a display on it. It looks like a digital display, and... On the image itself, it says quiche tart, and that is in the advertisement. So I'm assuming you can set things specific for the dish that you are cooking. It might even have recipes built in. How clever would that be? Um, I've seen these before, and I think the main feature for smart ovens are that you can preheat them quite quickly or connect to your phone uh, and things like that. Um, I, did I write some notes about this? You know, I, I don't think I did. But it's got clean, cleaning features. Um, this one actually in particular has a steaming function, which is supposed to help you clean as well. So you can set it on some kind of cleaning cycle. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, yeah, you can experience the intelligent kitchen via app. Um, so home connect. And I think it's so you can set things like warm up times. You can change the temperature, say your dish needs to change um, the temperature as it's cooking. Uh, you could probably do all that from your phone. Um, but yeah, I mean, personally and i don't want to give my vote too early i never understood the need for a smart oven um and even with all the features of this very expensive one i i still struggle to to understand why you would need it it even comes with a remote control separate to your phone um right i mean yeah i'm looking at the list of features here and think well first of all like my oven's got cleaning settings sort of self-cleaning settings mm. of a degree i've never used it no um i don't know that i need a touch screen uh display on my oven particularly yeah. it, fine it just feels like it's one of the th- more thing that can break um very true it says here it's got an electronic door lock so potentially quite good if you've got young children i suppose True. So they can't, or even, or just someone who's just takes a peek when you're cooking Yorkshire puddings, then deflates them because they open the oven too quickly. 
Um, <coughs> something useful like that. But yeah, I don't really get that. I don't understand the need. I don't need my oven to have pre-built recipes in. I think most people, especially that are buying an oven this expensive, probably know how to cook or have recipes they follow. So not sure that's particularly useful. Um, but I would like, if I was going to have an oven that was, that was to air quote smart, if I'm, and it's got to be app enabled, I guess, like everything is. Yeah. Um, I'd want a camera. Camera. That's what I would expect my smart oven to have. I'd want a camera in the oven that I could look at on my phone and see how my food was doing. Uh, That's what I'd like. Interesting that uh, if I search camera on this page, in the spec of the system, or I guess it's almost like a frequently asked question, is there a camera in the appliance? No is the response to this one. But it suggests that there maybe are ovens that do. I know there are other smart devices, and I'll talk about some of them in a sec, that do have yeah. cameras on the inside, which are quite clever. But, yeah, I'd agree. I think a camera on the inside of this would be really cool. But what kind of camera would you have to put in there to be able to not melt? <laughs> well, they put <laughs> or... light bulbs in ovens, don't they? So if a light bulb can survive, I would assume that if it was appropriately shielded, a camera is just a series of lenses and a sensor. Mm. As long as the sensor's kept protected from the heat, it would probably be okay. You yeah, can put an yeah. action camera in a dishwasher, for example, and it will survive. Not that they get as hot as an oven, but they do get quite hot. That sounds they, like quite uh, a story if you've tested that already. <laughs> people do it. Loads of people have done it. If you go on YouTube, you can find loads of people who put cameras into weird places like that. Really? Yeah. yeah. That. You can put yeah. a, an action camera in a, wash, in a dishwasher. It'll survive. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think a smart oven... I, I must admit, I've looked at smart kitchen products. i bought an overly expensive toaster that was sort of smart in air quotes it's not app enabled or anything quite that ridiculous but it does it's got like touch buttons to lower and raise the toast rather than like your traditional kind of lever it's got a couple of specific settings for a crumpet or fruit toast which will <laughs> toast it slightly differently or get more intense heat on one side than the other and mm. kind of silly things like that but i don't know even that feels gimmicky I don't know that app-enabled home appliances is necessarily that useful for me. Yeah, I suppose I will say, just to try and play devil's advocate, a bit like washing machines and um, tumble dryers and things like that are smart-enabled, or some of them are. I guess the ability to be able to multitask, so put something in the oven in this example, set a certain timer, nip off and do something in the house. You know, I know you shouldn't technically probably leave the house, but... You know, maybe even go for a walk with the dog and leave your, you know, your roast doing away in the oven and then, you know, be able to nip in, have a little look at the camera. Oh, that's looking a little bit browner than I expected at this point. I'll just take the temperature down a little yeah. bit and, and, and that, that'll be okay by the time I get home. Maybe even to be able to pre-program a routine. So, you know, if you're doing a piece of pork, for example, you typically start on the crackling with a very intense setting and then you reduce it for the longer cooking time. And that's theoretically designed to get the, the crackling going. Mm. I guess you could pre-program that. I, so I can see reasons. Do I need one? No, probably not. In my day-to-day yeah. -day life, maybe for sort of someone running a busy home that needs to be able to multitask and kind of head out and do these things. Or maybe just even a busy working parent who, sort of, a bit like a slow cooker, pops something in the oven and is able to turn it on remotely and start that cooking before they arrive home so their food mm, is ready to go when they walk in the door. Maybe that's a use case. Um, I'm trying to be positive about it, Robbie, because I don't really think I see a use for it. Yeah, but honestly. I suppose there are, there are people with different circumstances to me who might find that valuable. Yeah. And I don't know if I mentioned the price before, but this, this particular one is £1,500. Um, mm -hmm. I think there were cheaper ones, but they're, I think they were about £1,000 plus. £1,000 plus pounds, mostly for the smart ones. Yeah. So you have to be, you know, really wanting these features, I think, for, for an oven like this. And I'm the same. I think uh, my vote is also gimmick on this one. I can't see a need for it. Yeah, I mean, what's a good oven probably cost five, six hundred quid, I don't know. Yeah. For a, like a yeah. decent oven. Um, these I mean, are this one isn't even line, a, it doesn't, it only has a single oven. So there's no yeah. grill, separate grill. Um, it is just one oven. So that's something to bear in mind as well. With that expense, um, yeah, there's only kind of one section. 
Although I say that, what is that that's... Um... There's some weird panel that seems to pop up at the front and I can't work out what it's supposed to be doing. It, I think that might be the, the tank with the liquid in for the cleaning. Because uh, there's a uh, reference in the description. Sorry for those who aren't watching on YouTube, which won't mean much. There's a reference in there about active cleaning and then having a tank empty, empty indicator, which would tell me that there is a tank that needs to be filled. Clever. So it might be that actually this is able to steam as well. Yes, that no, it is um, able to steam. Um, oh, there you go. So that's, I guess, that's something that a normal oven couldn't do. Yeah. I, and this is probably for a serious like home enthusiast that really likes to get quite fancy with their cooking. Yes. Um, or just fancy yeah. with their kitchen. I mean, there's one here. What's it say? With 15 programmed heating methods, including hot air eco, conventional top and bottom heating, a pizza setting, and cool start, you'll have precise control over all your cooking. Yeah, that's the thing. And I the think added you get from steam station is for crispy crusts and juicy roasts. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. I think it's a I, no for me. <laughs> I've got a handful of different symbols on my oven that I'll be honest, I've never used that provide slightly different functionality that were in themselves reasonably smart when I bought it. Mm. I can probably count on one hand the amount of times in the four or five years I've had that oven that I've ever turned that dial to anything other than the conventional fan oven, and that's to go to the electric grill. Yeah. And that's, <laughs> and that's a pain in the arse. It takes forever to warm up. It does. It yeah. does. I there you go. will say, though, I don't think this is a gimmick. Really? I just feel like it's... For, for me, audience. it's a different audience. It's intended for someone who's very mm -hmm. much more into this than uh, or wants precision in, in a way that I'm less bothered. I think it's it's got an audience. There's probably people that d demand this stuff. I just don't think it's for me. I don't know if, to me, a gimmick is something that just feels a bit pointless and tacked on, whereas I think these have been well thought through and the cost kind of is premium for a reason. They're just not things that I need. Uh, what I, that's my take. I'd agree with that to the extent um, of most of the features, but I do think there are gimmicky features in here. Like, you know, the, the thing that's on their main photo, the quiche tart setting for cooking something, seems like a very niche thing. And it reminds me of, you know, when you get microwaves and it has settings on the outside for like, I don't know, pizza or popcorn or random things. I don't think I've ever used those settings. So to predetermine how someone's going to cook the food, Without really knowing what that setting does, I don't think it's ever going to be used by anyone. Um, I could be wrong. I could be, uh, there could be people out there who use those settings and are just happy to trust that the oven knows what it's doing. If you set quiche, <laughs> it knows it's going to but cook a quiche from whatever point. All that stuff is in the book, though. So if you bother to open the guide, it does tell who you. Who does that, though? I've done it because my microwave's got weird things on, like it can do yogurt. And I'm yogurt. like, how does that work? Yeah, my microwave can make yogurt. I don't know how it does it, but it's got a yogurt button. <laughs> okay. So, okay. I don't know. I, I agree. I better think we've got a rank. We've, we're ranking the overall concept, okay. aren't we? So I think in this one, there's more that makes sense than perhaps don't. Whereas okay. the toilet, they felt like there was way more that had less to do with the, the toilet, toilet experience yeah. <laughs> the, than the actual, you know, the oven does in this case. Okay. Yeah. Personal okay. Opinion, I'll though. retract my... Um... We we're, we're allowed to be split, Robbie. We can yeah. go in different directions. It's not going to be unanimous. I have to say, I think it's a bit of a gimmick, but... Well, then stick, stick to your guns, my man. Stick there you go. Guns. We split. We split. Okay, next one. <laughs> we have a smart cat litter called the Litter Robot gimmick. 4. <laughs> you haven't even read it yet. Gimmick. You haven't even... <laughs> you haven't even... <laughs> my, cat doesn't, and my cat doesn't need smart anything. Gimmick. Come on. Go on. You haven't heard any of the features yet. <laughs> hey, look, okay, so first I would, of all... I could see the use for the oven. I don't care about how my cat goes to the toilet. A lot well, of people do. A lot of people you, do. You, I'm you, you got, you, well, I was going to say, I've just opened the article. It's got 4.2 out of 5 and 3,500 reviews, so a lot of people think it's good. The first thing I'd say, um, well, so one of the big things that they, they say, and it's the first list, uh, first item on their bullet-pointed benefits is never scoop again. <laughs> which for a lot of people would be worth it on its own. <laughs> Never scoop the poop again. Um, <clears throat> and I have to say that the design of it, it looks almost like a, a an open tumble dryer. <laughs> um, not something you want to be encouraging your cat to get into, is it? 
if well, you own a tumbler. Well, that's the first challenge with any litter box <laughs> is encouraging your cat to even go into it in the first place. Um, but it does look quite futuristic, for, quite cool, I'd say, almost, for a cat litter. Um, some of the features include drastically reducing litter box odors, um, the never scoop again, and that's got a little... Um, uh, like a trademark symbol on it there as well, the never scoop again. <laughs> <laughs> minimize, uh, minimize litter tracking, including fence, sorry, minimize litter tracking with included fence and step. So I think that's uh, to reduce the amount that they drag in and out with the litter. Yeah. Um, monitor litter box usage and track weight in the app. So <laughs> it checks uh, how full it is based on the weight. And you can also yeah. check throughout the day. It's it, it's got a little graph here telling you um how frequently the cats are using it, uh, which I you know I actually think is quite a clever thing. Uh, Multi cat design suitable for four cats as well. Um, so this toilet works for different people, or different animals. But your other toilet, we don't know that that necessarily does. This is a smarter toilet than the other toilet. Then do you think? I just think this looks ridiculous. <laughs> um, it genuinely looks like a tumble dryer. It does look it, like it, it does. Further down, it calls it, it says view real time litter level. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so you can see how it, full it is. Cat recognition, laser and weight sensor technology detects cats weighing three pounds and above. Individual cat recognition launching in 2023. Yeah, so that'll be using um, your, um, the chip because we've got a cat recognizer for our um, cat flap. But the health insights, how, do you, how can you call this health insights? The all-new smart scale monitors your kitty's activity and weight through the app. What activity is it monitoring? Just how many times it poops a day? Yeah. What if it's, and it's body weight? And it's not it's very body well. weight before and after. You need to change its food if it's. What uh, if it it's does it regularly? somewhere else? What if it goes out in the garden and does it in the garden, and then the app goes, oh, "The cat hasn't pooed for three days," and mm -hmm. it actually turns out it's just been doing it outside. Good point. Do you think this is better suited for home cats then? I don't know. I mean, my cat's uh, my cat's not a house cat. Per se, he's he. I mean, he stays in the house like during crappy weather and during the day, and and crappy weather coming overnight. That. Yeah, but um, he does all of his business outdoors, and he that's how he wants it. He doesn't really like litter trays. Mm, interesting. I'm I'm not convinced. I'm sorry. Uh, I think when your bullet points say never scoop again, drastically reduce litter box odors. I mean, that's a desirable. I don't want my house to stink, but there are cheaper ways of doing that. Minimizing the amount of cat litter that gets flicked around again, never been a massive concern. I've got a Hoover. Uh, I don't want to monitor my cat's toilet habits or its weight particularly, um, and I'm not worried about multi-cat design. Although I think it's quite funny. Uh, I'm I'm still firmly in the gimmick. Straight corner, out of the gate, afraid. Yeah, <laughs> don't change your mind. Just don't get it. I um, actually. I like the could... fact the app's called Whisker, though. That's nice. Yeah. And I don't like this next line. This is another reason it puts me off, because I know the type of pet owner this is aimed at. Join one million pet parents who've changed their lives with cats. Pet parents. Pet parents. Nah. Yeah. You're I'm a pet a... parent. You're in that I crowd. Pets. I don't write. I don't get them birthday cards, and <laughs> I don't write cards to other people with their names on. We do. I'm not. We are those well, kind of parents. <laughs> it's because you haven't got kids yet, Robbie. As soon as you have kids, you'll stop writing the animals' names on cards, I promise you. <laughs> yeah, we, we uh, in fact, it was the cat's birthday the other day, and Christina made a a little pile, like a cake. Um, One was tuna for the cat that likes tuna, <laughs> and one was chicken for the cat that likes chicken. So they had a little cake, and she sang happy birthday. I've got a video and everything. Um, Yeah, we are those kind of parents. <laughs> then, then I think we know where you're going with this then, don't we? I, I do actually think there is some utility in this. Um, the only thing, what I mean, it, the main thing. What does it cost? $699. Oh the app's got like charts and graphs. Yeah. For, it's all about the data. Uh, I knew that's why you'd like it. I knew it was the data that you were into. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I can't believe it's got so many positive reviews at $650. 3,537 reviews. I know. At 4. It's 2 incredible. Stars. That's incredible. That incredible. is really good. Incredible. Uh, six hundred and ninety nine dollars, though that is quite a steep price. What is this additional product that you have to buy? Ah, uh, well, a load of crap. Well, this needs to fit the object. So they also sell for an additional forty dollars the litter robot litter trap in matte black, 
And it says, unlike standard cat litter mats, the litter robot litter trap mat is custom designed to fit litter robots base, guaranteeing that litter granules tracked out of your self-cleaning litter box are caught in its heavy duty urine repellent top mesh layer. I thought the whole point was that it reduced the amount of litter that came out, not that you had to pay $40 to catch it. Yeah, reduces, doesn't minimise it to zero. Oh, no, no. And do you know how much the uh, the actual odour removing things are you have to put into it? Because, of course, they have to be changed. Mm, yeah, $30, it looks like. $30 for a pack of six. I wonder how long they last. Um, Say goodbye to litter box odours and hello to a fresher home. That's what people want, Jay. Give the people what they want. Train your cat to shit outside. <laughs> we try training a cat to do anything. My You're just lucky your cat outside. does. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen those videos where people train their cats to uh, to use the actual toilet? I find those? that more unnerving. Imagine go. Imagine if you're training to use your eight thousand pound LED <laughs> toilet, and then it hot jet wash hot jet washed them as they got off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be impressive. <laughs> Okay, oh, so you're in the gimmick camp. I'm in the. Gimmick. I think it could be useful, but it's very expensive camp. I just think it's ridiculous. You'd pay six hundred and fifty pound for a cat toilet, but not a thousand pound for an oven with extra settings. Different priorities. Clearly. <laughs> yeah, I'm not interested in how my food is prepared, but as long as my cat goes to poop in a tumble dryer, I'm okay. <laughs> oh, oh my after the god, cats, man. Look yeah, after the yeah. I okay, know. I have a I have a pet enthusiast for a wife. <laughs> You should ask. You should ask. Uh, you should ask her whether she would buy this. She would not spend six hundred and fifty pound on that. She doesn't like gadgets in general. Oh, okay. Um, so the idea of app enabling her cat's toilet would not do it for Laura. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> okay. Next one. We're returning yes. to the kitchen again. Come on, you've got to redeem yourself now. You mentioned smart toasters earlier. Oh no. Uh, now this is has, has to be one of the smartest ones I've seen, and oh, it comes. Dear. This is the one actually that I have seen on, um, as I was doing my research on this, I had seen this on Short Circuit, which is again another Linus Media Group sub channel on YouTube, um, where they reviewed it. I don't think the review was highly positive, um, <laughs> but it has a lot of cool features. It has a full display on the front, a touchscreen display, where you can choose the type of item that you're putting in. You can choose your level of toastiness, which is decided by color which is quite good. Um, yeah. And you can choose, uh, just based on this little uh, image here, whether it's fresh, frozen, or reheat. Um, again, quite clever. There's the different types of six smart bread modes, it says. The first being toast, then bagel, English muffin. My, my toaster, though, has the ability to do fresh, frozen, or reheat without the need to write it on screen with a touch screen. I think, most do. I think yeah. most do, if I'm honest. And the colour setting is just... The same as you. I mean, okay, they're giving you a visual indicator, but that surely only works if you're using one type of bread that starts the colour that the toaster starts with. Yeah. Anything else that's slightly different is not going to work. I, I like some of the descriptions, and this tells me all I need to know about this. Say goodbye to slow and dry, and say hello to delicious bagels, English muffins, toast waffles, pastry sandwiches, and quesadillas. Yeah. Say goodbye to slow and dry. I don't think I've ever thought my toaster was slow and dry. <laughs> um, it's pretty... It's supposed to be pretty good, to be fair. The, the the toast that comes out, configure it right, and you get used to it. I mean, the reviews, I can't find them on here. Oh, yeah. There are some pretty high, highly reviewed... Um, it's probably the owner's reviews in here. Though there are also some critical ones. I mean, you can see partial cooking of some items in the, in the images that they've posted. It, I have to say, have, it does look smart. It, it has the option of having an analog clock when it's not in use. Have you seen how much it costs if you want to do paninis in it? Oh, yes. So that's the other thing it has is a, is a, an, a, a panini attachment so that you can fold it up in this metal contraption and then put it in uh, the toaster as well. And it makes these the, fresh paninis. It's the Revolution Toasty Press specifically. So it does more than paninis, but you do need to buy that as well. So it's, yeah, quesadillas melts and more in your toaster. Mm. But basically, it's like a. It looks like some sort of cradle that you lower your toasted sandwich into this special microwave with. Uh, sorry, yeah. the toaster with. I'll be honest. It of the stuff we've looked at so far, for what it costs at three hundred and fifty, is it? Yeah, three hundred fifty dollars without the dollars. panini. I'd be more. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. I'd be more inclined to go for this than the other three gadgets you've shown so far. 
happens to be the cheapest of them all. <laughs> Which it's not might because be of that. I think it's kind of, I mean that obviously that obviously helps, but I think it's more proportionate to how I think I'd use I mean I wouldn't use this heavily because as you know I'm a type two diabetic and I'm not supposed to be eating much in the way of carbohydrates. Yeah. So something that exclusively toasts carbohydrates is a bit lost on me. But I like I like the idea. It's novel. It doesn't require my smartphone by the looks of it. No. Which it's not a dependency that I'm particularly huge on when it comes to tech. I liked it for a while. I've gone off it now. I just think it's not particularly future-proof. Mm. Um, I should say as well, we didn't say the name. It's called the Instaglow R180 Toaster. Anyone who wants to look just it up in case anyone's content. desperate to look this up and buy it. Yes, on yeah. Jay's recommendation. He did say it was... Uh... I said it was the most likely to be bought by me. <laughs> I do think, though, if we think about how we rank this... I would still call this a gimmick because I don't think a toaster needs a touchscreen. I'd agree. Not I like think that. The innovations are unnecessary. It's still toast, toast, just like normal yeah. toasters. Um, say well, that I don't know. Fast. It does say it does say InstaGlow heating system reaches full heat in seconds, searing the bread without drying it, so it's crispy on the outside yet soft and delicious on the inside. So, if that in itself is genuinely something that other toasters can't do. And it makes the toast better. I would say that's that's the innovation. I'm not bothered about the touchscreen. I don't feel like you needed that to enable the benefit. Do you know what I mean? That's what I would say. I, I think you'd you could probably find glow with a button. You could probably find that feature on another toaster that doesn't have a smart display, and it'll probably be far cheaper. Yeah, yeah, I'd agree. I think we're aligned on this one. I think this is one's a is a gimmick, mostly for the screen. Robbie, I think we're running longer than we expected on time here. We might have time for one more gadget, do we think? Uh, one or two, I'd say one or two. Okay. Let's try I'll and pick my... Uh, to get you to pick your most controversial or your best one. I'll do a quick one. This one's a quick okay. one. <laughs> okay. So I brought oh, it up no. on screen. This one's called Quirky Egg Minder, and it's a <laughs> smart egg holder uh, that you can have, uh, I think, just sitting in your fridge. Um, ah, so and, not that useful in the UK then. Well, so I couldn't find it in the UK, but it is a device that exists. <laughs> well, you know why that is, don't you? Why? So in the UK, you don't, you're not encouraged to keep your eggs in the fridge. You don't need to. Oh well, it doesn't have to be in the fridge. But isn't that, isn't that the idea? No, That's no, why no. It looks like a fridge, isn't it? A shelf thing. Don't well, it? it looks like the kind of shelf that you would have in a fridge, but you don't need to have it in your fridge. Doesn't requ- it's not required to be in a fridge to, to take oh, advantage okay. of it. I was going to say, if that's, if that's a requirement or no, that's no, no. what it's for, then you wouldn't need it in this country. So it's just an egg tray. You take your eggs out of wherever you've, you've bought them, little cartons, and you put them in this egg tray, and it has a little lid on it as well, so you can store it. And um, the idea behind it is that it will send you a notification when you're running drastically low on eggs so that you can buy some more. <laughs> um, it's a very simple and quick one, but there you go. I think the it, link I included is doesn't really describe it that well. I've got another link I can it's find. It's pretty awful. Um, oh, it's battery operated. Yes. Someone has put here a sturdy egg tray for your fridge, but obviously not where it's necessarily meant to go. Um, apparently the battery's run down, which happens in a few days or less. Really? Okay. Oh, hang on. This sounds like this might be a bit of a... Okay, let me read you this review on Amazon. Okay, okay. Because it's a verified purchase, but it sounds questionable. Batteries run down too fast, but now at the $9 price, it's worth it just to hold your eggs. Very good quality. It says, I have purchased five of these, several as gifts, and they all work well until the batteries run down, which happens in a few days or less. I've heard the NSA is using these to transmit tip security memos they want to leak to the Russians, but that's not verified. This This device is a real conversation piece. The tray is very good quality and the whole system would work well if you have your own chickens and are routinely adding fresh eggs. I know several people who know people with chickens and they routinely supply a tray to the chicken people to be filled with eggs. This would be a great gift to friends like that. I wonder if we're using old cardboard egg trays over and over to get eggs from undocumented chickens might be an E. coli risk. The freshness sensor, the freshness sensor is only about the oldest items placed in the tray in order and it does not know the difference between a lemon, a lime, an egg or a rock. You have to install Wink on your phone by manually keying in your home Wi-Fi. Uh, otherwise, you'll think you've installed it because you got to flash with the Wink app. Uh, but it still won't talk to your eggs. 
that done, the tray does not communicate well from inside the fridge, so it needs to be taken out to the counter when you add or remove eggs. It updates quickly, perhaps every few seconds, but the deal breaker is that fresh alkaline batteries run down in a few days, and then your smart tray becomes stupid until you replace them, and then the batteries, that is. The real nice people at Quirky are very good and walk me through the installation. There you go. <laughs> there you go. What a bonkers review that, that is. That is but, a, um, a roller coaster of a review. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't. I am going to say 100% gimmick. Do you think? Yeah. Well, it, it looks like, even though that guy's got like a jovial review there, that it doesn't actually do anything smart to check the eggs. It's purely basing it on when the egg was placed into the container and when it was removed. So if this was doing, for example, I don't know if you've seen that viral video going around the internet at the moment, which shows you how um, like in these like big egg, egg processing factories, they identify uh, eggs that have been fertilized. And basically they just they run like a whole tray of these eggs into this machine, beam a certain type of light through it, and the ones that are fertilized go red and everything else goes a different color. Mm. And they just pull the red ones out and then they carry on processing it. If this did something clever, like... You know, do something like with some sort of light or something to detect the quality of the egg or something meaningful to tell you if the leg was, the egg was old or yeah. then maybe this would be useful but if it literally just tells you how long the egg's been in that position in the tray for and it doesn't know whether it's a rock an egg or something else I'm not sure that it's actually that useful it feels like a gimmick okay I'll take that I from the article I read it also said that it, it notifies you when the um when you're running low of your stock. Yeah. Which? It's a bit like those <coughs> fridges with cameras on the inside so you can see what's in your fridge. Why don't you mention that? Right anywhere. <laughs> yeah. I actually think they've got more use than your quirky egg minder. But um, go on, is, that, is that where we're going next to it? Well, we can do. We can do. I think that's a quick one. Go I actually on. think there's, there is utility in that one. It, I mean, it was $10. Um, so it's not an expensive purchase. So And then all the batteries. Win. And all the batteries, <laughs> yeah, true. Okay, well, seeing as you mentioned it, we'll go to smart fridges. Mm -hmm. um, and this includes, I brought one up, and um, this is one I found on Curry's, called the Samsung Family Hub Space Max. Uh, and it has a very large uh, touchscreen on the front as well. And as you rightly pointed out, a lot of the smart ones have cameras on the inside, so that at any point in anywhere in the world, you can check what's in your fridge, which I suppose for if you're in the shop and you're trying to figure out what you're missing, what you need to buy, could be a really useful feature. Similar to what you were mentioning about having a camera on the inside of your oven, you could check things remotely um, and then make changes accordingly in your shopping habits. I, I, I've said it out loud that I like the idea of a camera in my fridge, but I also recognise that that only really works if your fridge is stacked like these fridges are <laughs> in sales pictures. Personally, Perfectly stacked. as much as I would enjoy that, because I like things that are neat and organised, that's not how my family stocks the fridge. So <laughs> the camera would not see a lot other than a jumbled pile of things in places they shouldn't be and stuff tucked behind other things that I couldn't see. So I don't know how practical it actually is. Um, I like the idea of a smart fridge. I think, I think fridges are somewhere that everyone in the family kind of goes in and out of regularly during the day. So, And it's often a kind of centre point of a kitchen, so... If it has a nice screen on that does some cool things like show a calendar, you know, allow you yes. to leave messages yeah. for your family and stuff. I actually quite like that. I'm not against it. The camera inside, I don't know how clever that is, um, how, how actually useful it is. But, you know, just the kind of idea of having that hub, that touchscreen hub on your fridge would be quite clever. I'd like maybe a camera on the outside that could tell me who's approaching it and then ward my children off when they go for a snack <laughs> midnight snack. because <laughs> what that camera inside the fridge would see is my son constantly taking things out um <laughs> that he shouldn't be eating when he's dinner's dinner's due but you know um yeah. i'd agree with that i yeah. think the the idea of having the smart display on the front that could be a hub uh, so in the image here you've got a calendar on the front so you could track events for the family as well and people could see what's going on you can also have sticky notes and images as well so you can have like a kind of a photo, a digital photo frame just going through, cycling through images. I think that's a really cool idea. Definitely is like a hub for for your family. 
Um, I'd agree I mean, with that. The the camera, we, though, I also agree, really camera, requires it to be stacked perfectly yeah. in order to be able to see anything. You've got to have that kind of like the model Hollywood fridge, haven't you? You know, it's, it's perfect for the movies or TV or something. I, what I was going to say was we so we use a um, combination of an app called AnyList and then uh, Amazon's famous voice assistant, a bit of trigger in mind, uh, <laughs> to in tandem to manage like our family shopping list so if someone uses something and consumes it around the house because we've got one of these speak smart speakers in both rooms we just tell it what we want to add to the shopping list and it adds it to the shopping list and then mm. whoever's doing the shop that week it uses that list as the first kind of checkpoint to reorder new stuff from you know whatever uh, supermarket we're going to um so you know, something bringing that kind of functionality into the fridge, maybe a smart speaker, maybe the ability to scan the thing that you have just utilized or used up that you want to restock, and it automatically adds it to a centralized shopping list that you can then mm. use. That'd be quite cool. Yeah. Um, I've seen fridges that have similar kind of functionality. So I actually think this, the fridge is a place that could definitely utilize smart functionality. Yeah. Yeah, I'd agree. I, I don't think this is a, a gimmick, this one, I think. This is actually useful. The camera, maybe not so, but definitely the, the screen out the front. Yeah, I agree. Cool. And to be honest, we're running up on time, so that, I think, has to be the last one I was going to talk through. Um, have, you got, have you got one more small one we could squeeze in just to finish it off? One off to a nice, very nice small round one. Number. Go on. And it's called, mostly because I love the name of it, it's the Umbrella, and the branding is Unforgettable Umbrella, and it's just an umbrella with a smart tracker in. And I just think that's genius. How often do people leave their umbrellas all over the place? Um, and it's there's uh, two sizes. You can have bag size or normal classic size. And they actually look quite striking. They've got a very iridescent look to them. Um, but if you leave it is somewhere, this... it sends you a notification on your phone telling you that you've left it in its exact location where you've left it. Is this object actually for sale? This, I think, Indiegogo it looks at the like moment. You've got an Indiegogo. Well, you say at the moment it was backed in 2016. Ah, uh, see. Might be so showing something that's not available. Well, possible that this has never made its way to market. Hmm. Estimated shipping was March 2017, if you backed the early bird. I'll do some <laughs> digging. This was the link I found, but I the article I read it from was much more exists. I mean, even the picture of the smartphone in the video looks like it's an iPhone 5S or something. It does. Um, <laughs> I'd love, I'd love to know if that thing actually made it to market. Well, I'll, I'll find the link if it did, and I'll include it in the chat, in, not in the chat, in the, um, in the description. There you go. That was my quick last one. I like the idea of it. I think you could probably achieve something similar by tucking a Apple Air tag into an umbrella or something. Mm, true. Where in an umbrella would you do that though? Not a handle. You don't have pockets in. Umbrellas. Or you just strap it to the handle. Oh, Duct tape. I mean, they're only small, aren't they? I mean, the handle of my umbrella could probably take one. Mm, I suppose. Good point. To know. But it's an interesting combination, isn't it? It's like you said, it's a common problem, and I like I like it when innovation solves real problems. Yeah, true. And like you said, people people losing their umbrella is a real problem. It is. It is. You also find a lot of umbrellas bent out of shape in a, in a bin. Because they've broken in a bad storm, which would be good yeah, if you paid broke. more money for a smart one. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, it'd be a bit good, wouldn't you? Um, there you go. There you go. This has been fun going through the the gimmicks. There's a few more. I might even include those in the description as well if you wanted to check out the extra ones that we missed off. Um, save them for another episode, Robbie. Oh, that was too much fun. It. Don't know. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really enjoyed that. Definitely. Uh, let's definitely do that again. Let's bring some more random gadgets to the fore maybe i'll find some for you next time yeah and you can critique my choices yeah yeah that'd be fun <laughs> okay yeah. so that's all for today's episode thanks for hanging out with us and don't forget to like and subscribe on youtube and subscribe on all good podcasting services as well so you don't miss an episode you can also check us out on youtube live where we're starting to stream and have started to stream a couple of um a couple of different games we've got a variety of games we're usually trying to do sunday nights and we've missed a couple lately but we'll be trying to get into a more consistent habit so check us out on there and thanks again, and we'll see you next time.